Lord, we thank you and praise you for the message you put on my heart. Lord, and I ask that you would open our hearts to receive what you have to say for us today, Lord. Guide and direct me, Lord. Touch my lips with a coal from your altar, Lord, and anoint me to speak what you would have me speak this morning, Lord. I ask this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. My message today, this morning, is pride before fall. The Bible says that pride comes before the fall, and I shortened that to fit on the sign, like if you're, if you're new here or visiting, I'm limited to 20 spaces on the sign. So I have managed to keep my messages for eight years to fit in that, my 20 spaces without buying a bigger sign. So pride before fall. Talk about pride this morning. Pride seems to be something that is celebrated. But I don't see it so much celebrated in Scripture. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride is what brought down angels to become devils. Pride is a destructive force. Now, pride is defined by Merriam-Webster as reasonable self-esteem or confidence and satisfaction in oneself, whereas the Oxford defines it as the quality of having an excessively high opinion of oneself or one's own importance. What I found interesting, it seems like the Webster Dictionary definition of pride has now added more definitions that are positive, um, whereas the older definition is not such a positive thing. That's the definition that we're using is the Oxford de definition of the quality of having an excessively high opinion of oneself or one's own importance. We can, there is pride that we can say is not bad pride. If you're proud of your children because they've done something good, they've gotten good grades, that's not evil. If you're proud of something that you've done, but it isn't excessive or high over high opinion of yourself, that's not wrong either. We're talking about the type of pride that exalts you above where you should be. This month is Pride Month, so we'll give you a definition of what LGBT pride is. It's a worldwide movement and philosophy asserting that lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Individuals should be proud of their sexual orientation and gender identity. And we are being asked to celebrate an entire month of that type of pride. You do not take pride in sin. I have addressed these, every single one of these things is addressed in the scripture, and it's all called an abomination to God. And I don't want to go back over all those scriptures. If you're interested, I can get you the list of them. But all of them are called an abomination to God. It's not something we should celebrate. We should not be celebrating sin. And it breaks my heart that they've taken the symbol of God's promise to mankind that he would never destroy the earth again in a flood, the rainbow, and it turned it into a symbol of sin. We need to take back the rainbow. We need to take back God's promise. Why a whole month? We're going to get into and say more what the Bible says about pride and what scriptures say, but I just I've asked myself this is it again. Why are we celebrating the entire month? It started out as one day. It was a pride parade, a single day that was celebrated in June. That corresponded to some event that happened. And fine. If they wanted to do that, that's fine. But why a whole month? One day, the beginning of June, right before the beginning of June, we celebrated all those who died for our country. One day, we give them. But we give an entire month to sin. Something's backwards in our world today. Things are not right. What is up is down, what is down is up, and it's all confused. And it's confusing our young people. 
and you are being called all kinds of things. If you even speak out against this, I guarantee this message will probably, I put my messages on YouTube, I'm expecting when I put this one up, it will be taken down at some point. But I'm going to put it up anyway. I have no hatred towards these individuals. I have nothing but love. God loves them. It's his desire that all people, all men, all women are saved. But we are not to celebrate sin. Are we going to have adultery month? Are we going to have murder month? Will we celebrate murder? We have coveting month where we all covet somebody's belongings. What about the other commandments? What other other parts of the law? Are we going to just pick and choose and celebrate? Proverbs 16, 19 says, Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. We should not be dividing the spoil with the proud, but we should have a humble spirit. Before destruction, the heart of a person is proud, but humility comes before honor. You find a lot in the Proverbs comparing pride with humility. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. Proverbs 21.4, a haughty look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked are sin. Can I get in the picture? Proverbs has a lot to say about the difference between pride and humility. And if you're wondering what it is, what it means to be humble, well, make sure you get a copy of my book, Humility and How I Obtained It, after the service. It's just a joke. <laughs> We've never read that. <laughs> Proverbs 29 23, a person's pride will bring him low, but one who has a lowly spirit will gain honor. Pride will bring us to a low place eventually, but a low spirit, humility, will bring you honor. The Bible has a lot again to say about that. Isaiah 2 12, indeed, the Lord who commands armies has planned a day of judgment for all the high and mighty. For all who are proud, they will be humiliated. Everybody at some place is going to be brought low. They will be humble. The Bible says every knee will bow yes. in the end. Every knee yep. is going to bow before Jesus. Some in honest love and humility and praise of Him. Others in terror and fear because what is coming upon them. But they will be brought low. They will bow. We have been called out of the darkness of this world not to celebrate it. The Bible says we're brought out of darkness. We're not supposed to be celebrating darkness. and We need to understand that and not partake in the celebrations. Probably good for me as I am avoiding fast food as much as possible this month. Because every fast food restaurant has their pride commercials running and pride displays and I was shocked at some of them that were on the list that are joining in to celebrate. One of them was Chick-fil-A, Christian organization. They have hired a diversity person in their company and they felt that there was, they need to honor the pride that LGBT community during the month of June. That those things don't go together. If you're a Christian company, how? Why? Because they're afraid of the protests and the things that are going to come against. No, you stand up. You stand up for what you believe in. The Bible says we will be persecuted. That's part of standing up for what we believe in. We don't cave under pressure. But unfortunately, the church in America is caving under the pressure of the evil that is around us. And it's taking over our country in, in a rate that is unbelievable to me. Yes. Now, I'm not like everybody. I watch a lot of alternative news. I do a lot of research. I want to know what's going on in the world. 
But it comes with a price because it can be depressing. And I talk to a lot of people, they go, I don't watch the news. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. Well, yeah, you're a lot more comfortable that way, and I'll admit that. You're going to be a lot more comfortable ignoring it. But you know what? It's going to come and bite you in the behind. I used to have that picture of the people, the whole pe group of people with their head in the sand on the beach, or going to the church with their head in the sand. The problem is when you have your head in the sand, somebody's going to come up and kick you in the behind. And you won't see them coming. I want to know what's coming. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that everybody needs to, 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 you know, research and dig in as much as I do. I feel as a pastor, I need to do that. I need to know what's coming our way, especially evil, so I can warn you. You know, the, we are called the watchmen on the wall in Scripture. And it says if the watchman doesn't blow the horn, the sound of warning, he will be held responsible for what comes upon the people. Yes. And I don't want to be held responsible, so I'm going to blow the horn. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That is who you are. And I want to proclaim that today. There's some exciting stuff in this message too. It's just not all about the bad. This is the good. You are special to God. He says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, holy nation, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have been called out of darkness into the light. We don't want to celebrate darkness. We are not in darkness. We are not people of darkness. We are people of the light who once were not a people, but who are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You have obtained mercy through your relationship with Jesus Christ. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. It's the definition of mercy. We all deserve death. We all deserve a place in hell. Every single one of us. We all have violated God's law. But we will not receive that punishment because He is giving us this mercy. And His grace, grace is getting what you don't deserve. Yeah. So one is not getting what you deserve, the other is getting what you don't deserve. We don't deserve God's love, but we get it. We've all rebelled against Him at some point in our life. John 17, 15-18, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. We are not of this world, but we are part of this world. That means we don't take part in the sin of the world, but we have to live within this world, and we have a job to do. And that's to reach the people of this world who are living in darkness and tell them there's a better way. There is a better way to live. And it's not the stuff that's being fed to people every day. I had that article from the World Economic Forum and there's so much evil coming out of that group that's unbelievable. Just right out in your face. They're not even hiding their agenda anymore. They're telling us right exactly what their agenda is, is that you will someday be God. You will be God. Because they are going to make sure that they can transform you physically, through electronics, through genetic engineering, and make you a better human being. Well, for me, I don't think God, anybody can make a better human being than God. I don't trust another human being to make a better human being. I just, it's not going to happen. But we're in that world right now where that is being done. We need to stand against it. And remember that we're not part of this world. Don't give in to this world. But you have a job to do in this world. Just as Jesus did when he was on earth. We have to share the truth of God's love. Do not love the world or the things in the world. 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. That is our promise. We will abide forever, eternal life. But don't love the things of this world. We can get so caught up in, in things on, on this earth that we are so attached to them and we, you know, put all our attention on them and forget about the things of God, to spend time with Him, to be in prayer, to be with His people. Our churches in America are dying, folks. I am so thankful all of you are here today. You made the point to get up, dust the sleep out of your eyes and the sand that the sand man put in there and put you to sleep, to get up, shake it off, and get in your car, drive down. It, took, it takes an effort, and I thank you for that. But we need, and, and the effort's getting harder and harder. How many would admit that? Not as easy as it used to be. I don't know why. I'm trying to figure that out. We used to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. When I was single, I went Monday night and Wednesday night. There were times we had special speakers come into the church. We went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We went every night of the week. Couldn't wait to get there. And I'm trying to go, what's different in our life now than it was then? I really, I had a job back then. Had all the same, pretty much same responsibilities, but for some reason it's just so much harder today. I haven't figured it out. If you've got it figured out, let me know. But I mean, the purpose of the church isn't to wear you down, wear you out, so you're not good <laughs> in the world. I mean, there we didn't do that every week. You know, we didn't go to church every night. That was once or twice a year, and they had some great speakers, but. Sunday was a day that was just dedicated to worshiping God. I couldn't wait. you would go to church in the morning. You know, I taught Sunday school, then I went to service. I'd go home, take a nap, get up, get back to church. Couldn't wait to get back. And I found time to eat in between. You know, but today on Sunday, there's so much stuff. Everything is on Sunday, it seems like, anymore. Um, we just dealt with the fair. And now they changed where they had the kids that had animals. And pens that had to have it in the fair had to be there on, on a Sunday to get everything ready. That was new this year. See, why Sunday? Soccer games on Sunday. You know, all the biggest sports events on TV on Sunday. Auto racing on Sunday. And I go, what did that? Because I remember I loved watching the Indy 500 every year. But it used to be on Memorial Day when I was young. It was on Monday. It wasn't on Sunday. Then they switched it. And I used to have to record it and then get home. And I, I turn, would not turn the radio on so I wouldn't hear who won. <laughs> so I'd get home and watch it and be surprised. But they switched it. They're making it so people have so many other things to do than to be in church on Sunday. Isaiah 14, 12 says, How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Where did pride come from? It started with Lucifer. We read about him in the book of Isaiah. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. We're told in Scripture that Lucifer was an angel that was very beautiful, charge of worship in heaven. He was one of the covering angels over the throne of God. Very high position. It says, how have you fallen? What was it that caused him to be cut down and to, be, to fall? Because it says, you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I want you to hear the pride in all of them, in the five I am's of Satan or Lucifer. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. 
the pride in all those statements. Let's look at them again. I will ascend into heaven. It has to do with position. He wanted a higher position. He didn't want to be serving mankind. He wanted to be ascended to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Let's talk about rule, being in charge. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. He wanted to sit on the mount of the congregation of God in the Garden of Eden to be idolized, to be worshipped instead of God. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. The clouds in Scripture oftentimes the glory of God is spoken of as a cloud. He wanted to be dazzling. I will be like the Most High. He wanted equality with God. Pride. Pride was what caused Lucifer to fall and that is what is tearing down so many today. This idea that we should be proud of our sin and have a whole month to celebrate it. And Lucifer did fall. Isaiah 14, 15 says, Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol to the lowest depths of the pit because of his statements. Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Matthew 25, 41 says, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Eventually, pride will cause a fall. And that's why I have so much fear about what's going on in America, that we're allowing it. I remember the first hearing about the Pride Month or Pride Day, hardly anybody paid attention to it. In just a few short years, you hear it every day. I see commercials celebrating it. I see programs celebrating it. I see so much celebrating it. And if we allow this type of celebration to continue in the United States, God is going to judge this nation. Or he's going to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And I don't think he's going to do that. Why don't they call it what it is? Instead of Pride Month, why don't we call it Sodom and Gomorrah Month? Because the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is what is being celebrated. It's sin. Read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot offered the people of Sodom his own daughter, they didn't want his daughter, they wanted the men, the angels that came, to know them carnally, to know them sexually. And they were so driven by that perverted desire that when they were struck blind, they continued groping in their blindness trying to get a hold of the angels. They didn't care. I, I don't know about you, but if I'm doing something and all of a sudden I'm blind, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and try to figure out why I'm blind and if I can do something about it. But that didn't even stop them. Losing their eyesight. But that's what's happening in America today. People are losing their eyesight. They no longer see the sin. We, it, we've become so used to it in this country that most of the sin that's going on around us, we don't even see it anymore. We just turn and look the other way. We don't confront it. We should at least be confronting it in prayer. It should be driving you to your knees. I want to look at some other I wills. We saw the I wills of Satan. What about the I wills of God? I would much rather be under what God wants. In Exodus 6, 6 to 8, found between two declarations of God's name, he said, I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt. Egypt in the scripture was a type of sin. Another way you can read that is God saying, I will bring you out from under the burdens of sin. I will take you to me for a people. God said, I will make you my people. I will be to you a God. He wants to be our God. I will bring you into the land. 
The land he promises us is a restored earth. Put back to Eden the way it used to be. I will give it to you for a heritage. We have an inheritance waiting for us from God. The I wills of God. Then there are the seven I wills of Jesus found in the scriptures. I will make you fishers of men. He wants us to be reaching other people, going out and seeking other people to be saved. And he says, I will give you rest. He says, I will keep you. I will love you. I will do what you ask in my name. I will come again and see you again. I will send the Holy Spirit to you. Seven I wills. Statements of Jesus found in the scriptures. I want to contrast again the I wills of Satan to the I am's of Jesus. Satan said I will. But Jesus said I am. There is a big difference. One is what one person wants to be. One angel, one of God's creations says what he wants to be. Jesus, the Son of God, God on earth, said who he is. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I would much rather humble myself to Jesus and bow to him to be deceived by the I am's of Satan. Pride tells us we don't need God. Pride causes us to put ourselves on the throne. Pride causes us not to own our sin or be broken over it. Pride keeps us from apologizing to those we offend. Pride keeps us from authentic biblical repentance. First Peter 5, 5 to 7 says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him. For he cares for you. Humble yourselves. Humility. What is humility? Humility is recognizing who we are without God. There are times when I'm in my prayer time, alone and contemplating, and I think about what my life would have been without Christ. And I stand here before you today saying, I don't think I would be alive today, honestly. I was headed so far in the wrong direction that without Jesus, I don't know where I would have wound up. I am who I am today. I'm not perfect, but I'm much better than I was. And I'm getting better a little bit each day because of my relationship with Jesus. And I want to end my life much better than I lived it from the beginning. Because I can't accomplish anything worthwhile in this world without Him. Everything I tried to do without Jesus was leading me nowhere. But after I submitted myself to Him, and that's where I had to learn what humility was, to admit that I was no good to admit that I needed a Savior. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. We all continue to sin even after we accept Christ as our Savior. And that sin, when we feel the sting of it, is when we need to ask God to forgive us and change and try to make changes not to do that again. Because if we don't do that, eventually our hearts become seared. We no longer feel the sting of sin. We 
you'll never want to get that place. But as long as we remain humble and admit that we are no good on our own, to be what God wants us to be, we have to submit ourselves to Him. The world is teaching a message just the opposite, teaching people you can become your own God. Whatever you desire for pleasure is okay. There is no sin. There is no eternal punishment because God is love and He loves everybody and He's not going to punish anybody. Well, there is a little bit of truth in that. No, God is not going to punish anybody. They're going to punish themselves. They're making that choice. Those that wind up in eternal fire with the devil and his angels for eternity are going to be there not because God put them there. They're going to be there because they refused every invitation that God gave them. Every way of escape that He provided for them, they refused it. They will not be able to stand before God and shake their finger and say, why are you doing this to us? You are not fair. Because they will know in that moment how fair God was to them. See, hell was created not for people. It was created for Satan and his angels that rebelled. Satan just wants to drag as many people there as he can to break God's heart. And we don't want to be part of that. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. Jesus, I thank you for what you did for all of us. That you willingly gave your life and took your punishment, took our punishment on you, Lord. You took that punishment for us, that we might be saved. A punishment you did not deserve, that we deserved. There is no greater love than that. We thank you for that, Jesus. If there's anybody here today and you have not given your life to Jesus, I invite you to do that today. You need to rededicate your life to him. I invite you to do that today. With that way, looking around, I want me to pray for you. To accept Christ, to rededicate your life, just raise your hand. We're all going to say a prayer together, along with those who have raised their hands this morning. Just repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. I know that I have failed you. And I need you as my Savior. Today, I dedicate my life to you. I accept your forgiveness. And I ask you to direct my life. To lead me into righteousness. I thank you, Jesus, for taking my punishment. Lord, give me the power to your Holy Spirit to follow you the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Let's go today and have a wonderful